contract talks between Roquan Smith and the Chicago Bears are reportedly expected to heat up this summer. So we'll check in on where Roquan Smith fits in the importance of this Bears defense, what that contract could look like, and maybe if any other players could be ready for a contract extension this summer. You are Locked On Bears, your daily Chicago Bears podcast. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. This is Locked On Bears, and I'm your host, Lauren Cox. I'm here to bring you your daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. You can follow me on Twitter at CoxSports1. You can follow the podcast on Twitter at Locked On Bears. You can like Locked On Bears on Facebook. Join the Locked On Bears Facebook group for even more Bears talk. And make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up with all of our video podcasts as well. Today's episode is brought to you by Bet Online. Bet Online has you covered this season with more props, odds, and lines than ever before. Bet Online, where the game starts. On the show today, we dive into Roquan Smith's upcoming contract negotiations slash ongoing contract negotiations, but the latest reporting makes it seem more like they're about to really get going for, you know, really substantively for the first time. So we'll kind of check in on where Roquan Smith fits in this defense, why, where his importance is, what we kind of know about Matt Eberflus in this defense and kind of fitting Roquan Smith within that. We'll look at what the contract could look like, what the value might be there, where the negotiating might happen there. And then we'll look at uh, other players up for contract extensions. And namely, I think the big one we'll have to talk about is David Montgomery. And we can look at where his price range might be and, and what recent history of running backs with the Bears offensive coordinator and other coaches in this coaching tree might say about where the Bears value that position. We have to start with Roquan Smith, of course. He's kind of the big name, the leader of this Bears defense, the man in the middle, the next of the pantheon of Chicago Bears linebackers. Not that we're putting him in the Hall of Fame just yet, but obviously has had a very encouraging start to his career. And so everybody's been kind of wondering here, like what, that contract situation might look at now because, you know, this is coming up on the, you know, after his rookie contract coming down to the end here, you do have the fifth year option. Currently what he's working on with the $9.735 million contract. It's hard to believe that Roquan Smith is already in his fifth season in the NFL, but we've seen him make pro bowls. We've seen him be all pro. We've seen him really kind of grow into this leader in the middle of the Chicago bears defense. He's not quite the vocal guy. I mean, he's not quiet, but he is, you know, he he does, when he does speak, it carries some weight, right? I mean, he does act as one of the faces of this defense, certainly. It's not quite the the Brian Erlacher level of like, you know, loud and in your face type of way, but clearly the team, you know, rallies around him and values his presence in the middle there, especially as they transition now to this 4-3 defense. And I think that might be part of why, the contract extension talk maybe hasn't heated up as much until now. I mean, one, typically it just isn't something that you do a lot during free agency in the draft time because front office is busy with those type of things. And now that you know the roster building has slowed down quite a bit for this stage of the offseason, now is more the time when you can go back and say, okay, now let's hammer out these contract details. But the other aspect of this is they are still fit trying to figure out exactly where Roquan Smith fits in this Bears defense. In that 3-4 under Vic Fangio and Sean Desai and Chuck Pagano, right? You have the two inside linebackers, and they're not they're not 100% interchangeable, but they're mostly interchangeable, right? You sort of think of them as almost being the same thing, just in two different spots and two different halves of the field with some slightly different variations of responsibilities, but otherwise... A little more similar, whereas in this 4-3, there's a bit more difference between the true middle linebacker position and the weak side linebacker position. More of you think about the outside linebacker, that off-ball type of linebacker position. And they've kind of said all along, they don't know yet where which one Roquan Smith is going to do, which one Nick Morrow is going to do, but it's probably going to be those two in some order that way. And so that's been part of this process, not that... 
they have to figure out whether Roquan Smith is good, but just a matter of figuring out what exactly his role in this defense is going to look like. And so now that we're getting into OTAs and those sort of off-season workouts, yes, they're not really rolling out there with pads on, but you can get a better sense of you know, him learning those responsibilities a little bit and, and being able to carry into that role as they look to negotiate here into the future of, of what that's really going to look like. I don't think there's like a, a massive financial difference in terms of like weak side linebackers are not paid more or less necessarily than true middle linebackers, but it does weigh in terms of like as they're figuring out what their long-term plan is going to be and how much they want to invest in Roquan Smith and how much they're going to need to, you know, invest around him in terms of if he's the middle guy, where else are they going to need to build at linebacker versus if he's more the weak side guy, where else are they going to need to build at linebacker, where they might see positional value and and more so in other players as to, okay, if he's going to be at this spot, what options will we have to fill the other spots and vice versa and how he fits into that plan? Because then you start to get into, you know, the dollars and cents of things a little bit more. And you can imagine with him being one of the, premier young players at his position he will want to be paid like one of the premier young players at his position and by all accounts it seems like both sides are very interested in finding a way to make that happen within within reason and it's just a matter of okay working out some of the nitty-gritty details of dollar amounts and guaranteed money and years and bonuses and, and all those difficult things but I think you saw the Colts with Matt Eberflus prioritize Darius Leonard and paying Darius Leonard big bucks with him playing more of that weak side linebacker position. That's not the true Mike. And I would imagine that might be where, where Roquan Smith looks, but then also that's where I think Matt Eberflus comes in this and says, okay, if I'm seeing Roquan Smith being not exactly the same as Darius Leonard, but playing that type of role in this defense, I have a feeling that will then be a fairly high priority for them the way it was for his defense in Indianapolis. So we'll take a closer look at Darius Leonard's contract and where if that's the starting point or or the measuring stick maybe for Roquan Smith's contract and what that all could look like next on Locked on Bears. Excuse me. Today's episode of Locked On Bears is brought to you by our partners at betonline.net. They're the number one source for all of your sports betting needs and information. You can look ahead to this upcoming Bears season and get some futures odds going right away on, for example, Bears odds to make the playoffs. Currently looking at a a bit of a, a long shot there to actually make the playoffs this season in the odds book. And right now the over under for wins is set at six and a half. So predictions a little bit low there, but hey, if you have some confidence in this Bears team and want to put your money where your mouth is, betonline.net is going to be the place for all of your sports betting needs. Basketball playoffs, hockey playoffs, Major League Baseball season, fights, soccer, tennis, you name it. BetOnline has it all, live betting, esports, and so much more. Head to their website today or use your mobile device to learn about all the different trends and action you need to know. BetOnline, where the game starts. The contract negotiations with Roquan Smith, I think, are going to start with Darius Leonard, right? That's he is, on average, the highest paid linebacker or inside linebacker in the NFL. If we separate, like, the the outside linebacker edge rushers from the off-ball linebackers, Darius Leonard's is is the contract that kind of sets the market there. You know, his average per year is $19.7 million each year. Fred Warner... Also got one recently and is not far behind him at just a hair over $19 million a year. Functionally, about $19 million a year. Darius Leonard, 19.7. So, you know, a lot of people have put the Roquan Smith number at like maybe 20 would be where he'd be shooting for, right? Because when you become the newest guy to get the contract extension, you usually want to be set a little bit above the previous guy, not only because you want to make more money, but because then you know, future deals will then be higher than that. So if you're getting less than what the top is right now, then you're going to continue to go farther and farther down because every new big deal will push everyone else a little bit farther down the list. So I think that $20 million a year number is sort of where Roquan Smith might be going after there, but it's a question of, okay, you know, is, is Roquan Smith Darius Leonard? I mean, it's, it, it feels like at times it can be a little bit splitting hairs, but And I don't know that that's the point of this podcast episode right now to to start to rank, okay, where does Roquan Smith 
rank among all linebackers in the NFL? And then from there, like, where where do you pay him? I mean, I think there's a lot to, like I said, There's we all know Roquan Smith is a very, very good player, and there's a lot to like about Ro- Roquan Smith. I think Darius Leonard is better against the run than Roquan Smith is. That doesn't make anybody a bad or a better or worse linebacker. But again, th- that's not exactly the point here. But, but, but what it comes down to is that value. You know, do the Bears see Roquan Smith as good or as as valuable financially as Darius Leonard was for the Colts? And that's where, you know, I wonder. When, 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 with Matt Eberflus coming in, Matt Eberflus does not have a pre-existing feeling necessarily about Roquan Smith, right? He didn't draft Roquan Smith. He hasn't coached Roquan Smith before the season. So, he, I mean, he's he's been around him now for, what, you know, four or five months and is getting an impression of him and seems to like him and, and all those things. There's nothing he has against Roquan Smith. But I could see where he might have a particular fondness for Darius Leonard being the guy that he helped draft and coach and, you know, not that he made him into the player that he is now, but has been involved in that process of Darius Leonard becoming one of the best linebackers in the NFL. And so if Iberflus is particularly partial to Leonard and otherwise fairly, like, you know, neutral, but, uh, you know, ad- admiration for Roquan Smith or whatever, like, you could see where he might think of Darius Leonard a little bit more than than Roquan Smith. And it's not Matt Iberflus that's sitting in these contract negotiations. That should be clear. But he and Ryan Poles are having these conversations and and that is certainly going to involve Matt Eberflus's input in these types of discussions. So then it becomes, you know, how firm finance I mean, and what number is, is Roquan Smith firm on and where, what is his, where, where does his priorities lie in these contract discussions? That's such a, I think an overlooked aspect of this for those of us on the outside that you know, like contract minutia can be overwhelming and, and complicated and hard to understand but there's an important variation here of like the total value, right? We can look at, at Darius Leonard's contract and see it's it's five years, $98.5 million. That averages out to $19.7 million a year, which is a lot. But the big number that the teams care about a little bit more is the total amount of guaranteed money because the guaranteed money is what you can't get out of. You can get out of anything that's not guaranteed. You know, when you cut the player, that becomes free cap space if for some reason something goes wrong, right? That's what it's all about with non-guaranteed versus guaranteed money. It's sort of when, you know, we're not worst case scenario, but right. You ideally the player is so good that they're worth all of the money that's that is signed to them on the contract and not just the guaranteed money. But once the money becomes unguaranteed, then it becomes easier to get out of. And that's what we talk about with salary cap flexibility with these contracts. And so Darius Leonard got 52 and a half million dollars guaranteed on his $98 million contract. And the way that's worked out essentially is a five-year deal. The first two years are fully guaranteed. And then after two seasons, the Colts can pretty well get out of it at any time. So it gives them, it locks them in for two years. And then they got three more years where they can keep paying them that much, or they could cut them if for some reason they absolutely want to. And so the guaranteed money is determining how long you're really fully locked into that contract versus how long the contract is just listed there on the books and the the interesting you know loophole caveat dynamic at play here is that Roquan Smith doesn't have an agent at least as far as we know on the outside he he wouldn't fully confirm that at a press conference but he sort of confirm he, he like by not the way he didn't answer questions about it sort of suggested that he doesn't have an agent. He is so it was reported in the past that he canned his agent and then he had never there was never any news of him adding an agent. And for the most part I think it's a not a, I think everyone knows it's not a it's like the media knows that he doesn't have one, but they can't like always publicly confirm that with reports, you know what I mean? Like the, until Roquan Smith like confirms it or some some sort of way to fully confirm that has happened. You can't know with a 100% certainty, but everyone knows Roquan Smith does not have an agent. And so if he's negotiating by himself with Ryan Poles, is he going to be really fixated on that $20 million a year number and maybe not be as fixated on the guaranteed cash? Or is he going to be one of these players that says, no, I don't care about the per year average. Give me a fully guaranteed contract. Maybe it's only 17 or 15 million dollars a year 
but it's fully guaranteed. So there's no, <laughs> there's no getting out of the contract. So that's the wild card here. And that's where it could be advantageous to the Bears if they can out-negotiate a player who, who might not be as trained in contract negotiations as an agent would be. And maybe the Bears can then get a more team-friendly contract as a result. Or maybe Roquan Smith will have certain priorities that an agent might not normally negotiate for or fully recommend for a client. And maybe that becomes then a more difficult negotiation that doesn't get done this summer and gets pushed off into the next off season where maybe Roquan becomes a free agent or maybe it's, it's that lead up to free agency. Maybe at some point he hires an agent, right? There's a lot that can still, still come together here. There's still be a little bit up in the air. So I, I'm curious how the valuations are going to play out, wh where the priorities are going to be and, and whether or not the lack of an agent will prove to be a good thing for the Bears or more trouble for the Bears? Either way, we'll kind of keep tabs on any and all updates we get in the Roquan Smith contract situation. But he's not hes not the only player, at least up for a contract extension this offseason. There's not a lot of them, but we'll look at, at David Montgomery in particular and check in on a couple of the other names that are technically going to be in the market for a contract extension next on Locked on Bears. Contract negotiations can have a lot of different moving parts. But nobody knows more about moving parts than our friends at rockauto.com. They're a family business that have been serving auto parts customers online for over 20 years. They got everything you could possibly need for your vehicle, between engine control modules and fuel pump assemblies to easy stuff that I can do, like uh, taillights and motor oil, even new carpet. Rockauto.com has a catalog that's so deep, you just enter in your car's make and model, and boom, it pulls up all the different parts available for your vehicle, and you can sort between the brands, specifications, and prices that you prefer. Some other part stores will have a different price tier if you're a professional mechanic versus a do-it-yourselfer like us, but rockauto.com's prices are the same low price for everybody. So don't spend up to twice as much for the same part somewhere else. Go to rockauto.com today and see all the parts available for your car or truck. When you check out, fill out their box that says, how did you hear about us? And write in the words, locked on. That way they know we sent you. Amazing selection, reliably low prices, all the parts your car will ever need. RockAuto.com. At this point, it would seem unlikely that David Montgomery gets an early contract extension from the Chicago Bears, but he really seems like the main alternative candidate besides Roquan Smith that's up for a deal. Right? The Bears have a lot of players who will become free agents this upcoming off season, but mo most of them are players who they just signed this year on so many of those one-year contracts, right? Byron Pringle, Nick Morrow, Ryan Griffin, DeAndre Houston Carson, Tavon Young, Dane Crookshank, Dakota Dozier, Julian Davenport, right? I mean, the uh, fullback, Harry Blasengame, Equinemius St. Brown. You know, a lot of those guys are signed to one-year prove-it deals for a reason, so of course then... Contract extension is not part of those negotiations. But as far as guys that have been on the team on a multi-year deal that are coming into free agency now, really the list is Jeremiah Atauchu, the outside linebacker who was injured and didn't really play much last season and doesn't really seem to have a natural spot in this current defense, but is still here. Also, the defensive lineman Angelo Blackson is in the second year of his two-year deal coming up here. And then as I'm looking through the list, that's Pretty much, Sam Mustafa will be a restricted free agent again. Uh, Thomas Graham will also be a free agent again because he was cut off his rookie deal and then brought back because I think he went on the practice squad or right before the 53 man roster, right? He wasn't kept on his full rookie deal. Duke Shelley will also be a free agent as well, but right, it's Daz Newsom. It's these guys that may they may want to bring back, but you wouldn't expect them to go out of their way to negotiate an early long term contract extension, they'll just re sign them after the season like normal. But David Montgomery, of course, is the exception now in the fourth year of his four-year rookie contract. And it brings up this issue of paying running backs. And we got into the details of this a little bit uh, last week on the podcast when we talked about what players have to sort of reprove themselves to this Bears coaching staff and how, yes, we all know David Montgomery is a good running back. Absolutely. He doesn't have to prove whether or not he's good. But this season, with a new coaching staff and a new front office that didn't draft him, he still has to, I think, prove to them what his value is in this offense. When you have Khalil Herbert in the backfield looking like a very promising option, you have 
Darrington Evans signed as a free agent this offseason from the Tennessee Titans. And then they draft Treston Ebner from Baylor in the sixth round and add an undrafted free agent running back as well. You have some real talent in this backfield. And if you feel like Herbert and Evans and Ebner can be a, a decent group, then you don't you might not feel as inclined to pay David Montgomery twelve million a year, thirteen million a year, you know, where, where these some of these bigger running back contracts are starting to go, especially then even separate from whether or not you think how good you think David Montgomery is, just purely the fact the, the the notion that running backs individually are not as valuable as they used to be. The teams are more easily able to find quality players at cheaper prices and that the, the analytics are starting to show more and more that the offensive line is much more impact. The, building the offensive line has a bigger difference in your running game than the running back that you have behind that offensive line relative to the value that you have to place financially in those players. When, when I look at, at like what a David Montgomery contract might look like, there's really two there's two levels of, of running back deals at the top of the market, right? There's there's like the highest paid running backs, the Christian McCaffrey's, uh, Kamara, Zeke Elliott, Dalvin Cook, Derrick Henry, Nick Chubb, Joe Mixon, right? Those guys are all in the 12 to $16 million range. McCaffrey's at the top at 16. Joe Mixon and Aaron Jones are at the bottom at 12. Then there's a massive gap after that at that $12 million mark to get to the next running back contract, which was James Conner at $7 million a year. It was a three-year, $21 million deal. So, like, there's a $5 million gap between, like, the eighth-highest paid running back and the ninth-highest paid running back outside of rookie contracts. Saquon Barkley's fifth-year option is in there, too. But really, from the guys that get contract extensions, one after another goes from $7 million to $12 million. There's a huge gap in that tier of, like, okay, like James Conner, Leonard Fournette, Naheem Hines, they all got starting running back money in their contract extensions, but not elite running back money, right? There's there's the gap right there. Seven million is kind of where the top is of the next tier guys. And then the top, top tier starts at 12 and goes up to 16. At this point, I don't think David Montgomery, certainly not at the Christian McCaffrey $16 million a year number. I don't think he's at the Alvin Kamara, Zeke Elliott 15 a year number. I don't, certainly it doesn't seem like he should get paid as much as Derrick Henry at 12 and a half. I think Derrick Henry is a better running back. So it, for me, he slots in at about that $12 million mark with Joe Mixon, Aaron Jones, and Nick Chubb are right around there, which is still pretty close to Derrick Henry, I should say. But but it feels like Dave Montgomery should be a little bit above the James Conner at $7 million. But that's like, that's where if I was a team building, that's about where I'd draw the line. It's like I could pay David Montgomery up to about that $7 million mark, but he, I just, I can't bring myself to pay a running back $12 million a year unless he's like truly like a dynamic game-changing difference maker. And David Montgomery is very, very good and will continue to be a very, very good running back in the NFL. But if he's not Derrick Henry and Christian McCaffrey and Alvin Kamara, I don't, I just can't, I can't bring myself to hit that, that, you know, that 10 plus million dollar range. It just, it's just a little bit too much for me. And so I don't know that, I don't know that the Bears are going to be inclined to do so, right? It's worth noting that Aaron Jones got the $12 million number from the Green Bay Packers with Luke Getze on that coaching staff running this same style of offense. So like he's been inclined in an offense to to get, to pay a running back a decent amount despite drafting AJ Dillon in the second round and having a pretty strong dynamic backfield of multiple players in there. We've also seen the the Shanahan offense in San Francisco pay Jarek McKinnon pretty big money relatively speaking for him, paying Tevin Coleman relatively big money. They have paid running backs in some of these Shanahan offenses. But David Montgomery is not Luke Getze's guy necessarily. And it doesn't, it remains to be seen how great of a fit Montgomery is in this offense. I don't think he's a bad fit in this offense at all. I think he will fit this offense, but is he a perfect fit? Is he the ideal type of running back they want in this system? We'll see. I mean, I don't know that he's bit, I don't think we've seen him in this outsides, this full on outside zone system. We saw it partially with Trubisky at the end of that season and he did, he did well, he did fine. But is this exactly what Luke Getze wants in the running back? I don't know. That's why I think he has to sort of show this season. Like, can he be that truly difference-making running back in this outside zone scheme? Maybe. And maybe that could be enough to get him paid. But I don't think it's going to get him paid this summer before they truly see it. And if I had to bet my money, I would guess that this is probably David Montgomery's last year in a Chicago Bears jersey. We'll see. Certainly, any and all David Montgomery updates we get 
We'll break it all down for you right here on the Locked On Bears podcast. So make sure you hit that subscribe button to keep up with all of our daily, in-depth Chicago Bears news and analysis. Looking at a couple of guests joining us this week, still finalizing exactly when and where, what slot they'll get into, but a couple of Chicago media names you'll you'll want to know, get some thoughts on Bears draft and Bears offseason and some of these narratives going around the team. So I hope you'll keep tuning back in for that. Hope you'll make Locked On Bears your first listen each and every day. And I hope that in return, the Locked On Bears podcast makes it that much easier for you to bear down.